He pulled tight the loosened buckles and clasps of his jerkin with unhurried movements, smoothed down the creases in his clothing, and made sure it did not hinder his freedom of movement at any point. He slung his sword across his back and adjusted the position of the hilt above his right shoulder. He tied a leather band around his forehead, pulling his hair behind his ears. He pulled on long combat gloves, bristling with short, conical silver spikes. He glanced up at the sun once more, his pupils narrowing into vertical slits. A glorious day, he thought. A glorious day for a fight. Today I'll be showing you all how I made Geralt's heavy combat gloves. Although the spikes as depicted in the game are pyramid shaped rather than conical, I'll save you all the heartache of how we arrived with this pattern and instead I'll jump right into the construction. So let's get going with a clean work surface because this is obviously unacceptable. It's just like wrapping a present. I'm terrible at wrapping presents. Now, this is the pattern that I'll be using for the gloves, and as you can possibly make out, this is the pattern mark five. I think that I'm happy with how this one is going to pan out. Okay, briefest aside for how I made the pattern because I don't want to cover it totally in depth in this video because this is probably going to run long as it is. But I covered my hands completely in duct tape, then traced where I wanted my seams to be and cut the duct tape off of my hands, traced it onto paper. And then after I had made the pattern out of paper, what I then did was just get some scrap fabric and make not one, not two, not three, but four mock-ups before I got a pattern that I was happy with. Um, you'll notice that there are four mock-ups and this is pattern mark five, don't worry about it. It's probably fine. But regardless, now I don't need that because I have the pattern that I'm happy with. So what we are going to do to start off with, I'm going to trace this onto some goat hide, we'll cut it out and then we're just going to stitch the pieces together. So let's get the leather going. So you can see that as I'm applying the water to it, it is actually drying as it's being applied. So while this side is still soaking in, the first side that I applied the water to is starting to return to its normal color. That's what we want. We don't want this to be completely soaked. We just want it to be a little bit damp before I add the dye. Now these gloves are going to match the jerkin in color. So I will be using the same color as on the jerkin. Now, the most difficult step in leatherworking, we have to wait. So, let's wait. All 
Alrighty, as we can see now the dye has dried, which is good, and it is now night time, so hopefully the lighting isn't too terrible. Now, the next thing to do here is, as you can see, these gloves have the stitching running down in between the knuckles with some decorative stitching on either side. So we do have those cut right down the back of the hand here, and on the reverse side, I have marked the points at which I need to stitch up to. So, yeah, now that these are dry and have that coat of Neats Foot Oil to seal them, so if I do bump them, it won't mark it permanently. What I'm going to do is basically just fold each of these like this. We're gonna run along it with our pricking iron and we're just going to stitch this all together. So I'm gonna be stamping these at about three mil in from the edge. So I'm just gonna mark that out now with my edge marker. Now the thing that you have to understand about every single leather tool is that they're all very inventively named. For example, the tool that marks edges is called an edge marker. Um, the tool that bevels edges, that's an edge beveler. This, this tool that's made out of iron and I use it to prick the leather, you guessed it, pricking iron. Like that, I want around about there, I reckon. So now that I've got my little run of stitching along there, obviously the next step is to run up and over the finger, but the problem is that laying flat, these fingers splay out. Each half of the finger will not sit where I want it to. And so for this part of the process, what I'm going to have to do, this is gonna get really squeaky, I'm going to have to manually manipulate it so that it sits up. This is part of it. This is going to help it form a three-dimensional glove that will be able to fit my hand inside of it rather than just being a flat piece. So in this instance, it'll simply be a matter of sliding that down until those two edges meet, getting one of my clips and just clipping it. So I'll only work on segments that long at a time. I might get two punches with the pricking iron if I'm lucky. I'll keep going back and forth between the stitching pony and the board that I'm punching the holes on. So this part is a little bit monotonous. The um, fact that I can't just get into a groove and just sort of stitch. I like it when I have a long run of things to stitch because I can just kind of tune out your hands, get into the rhythm. It's very meditative. Uh, this is not that because I keep having to switch between these two processes. I find it difficult to get in the groove, but it should be fine. Okay, so we have successfully sewed most of the way around one finger. The next part is kind of like an order of operations bit and I feel like there's explaining because as you can see, I have not stitched all the way down to the top, nor on the palm side have I stitched all the way down to where it meets the palm and that's on purpose. Now, I'm going to define some terms here to make it a little bit easier to talk, and I'm going to use the pinky and ring fingers to demonstrate. So with the pinky finger, if I were to get these two pieces and smush them and sew along there, we would call that sewing to the opposite. It's the opposite side of the glove. Whereas if I were to get the pinky finger and the ring finger and stitch along the seam in between them, we would call that adjacent. 
right? Here on the index finger, I have stitched opposite sides together all the way around here. Now, once I get to this bit, approximately, I'm going to want to stitch the adjacent parts together. And the reason for that is that if I were to just stitch everything opposite together, this would be a flat glove that my hand wouldn't be able to fit into. The parts in between the fingers, because I don't have fourchettes in this glove, Hi there, it's Editing Grant. You've probably just heard the word fourchette for the first time and are wondering what on earth I'm talking about. Let me explain briefly. A fourchette is just the piece of a glove that runs along the edge of the fingers to give the glove dimension and volume, sometimes all in one strip, but more normally in a number of separate fourchettes, as shown here. And now you're probably wondering why Live Action Grant said that I didn't include any fourchettes in my gloves, and the answer is that CD Projekt Red made me do it! Now look, I'd love to give a good reason as to why I felt like this design element was worth so much time and effort to reproduce, but as previously explained on this channel, most of my detailed design decisions are made arbitrarily. But the gloves do be looking all kinds of good with those long narrow fingers though. If you'd like more ramblings about fourchettes and gloves, as well as to see just how far I've progressed at creating watchable videos, please feel free to check out my glove vlog, which I will link to here. And now back to the show. Take it away, me. The parts in between the fingers do need to have volume, so rather than just stitching opposites together here, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to stitch adjacents together there just to create that volume for the webbing of my finger to sit and my hands to sit comfortably in the glove. So each finger I'm going to start about one pricking iron's width up and I'm going to stitch all the way around down to one pricking iron's width from the palm. So they're each going to have that little bit. Once we've done the perimeter of all four of the fingers, Fingers, then I'll be able to try it on and see just how far I need to stitch adjacent rather than opposite. I hope that this uh, little demonstration explanation made sense, but if it didn't, I'm sure that uh, very shortly forthcoming shall be video that will make it make sense. So let's carry on. So here you can see I have stitched around the edge of all of the fingers. Now, what I was talking about before hopefully is a little bit more obvious now. This will be getting stitched to the adjacent piece. So those will be getting stitched like this, and then on the back side of the hand, moving up to where the fingers join. And what that's going to do, you can kind of see if I pinch it here, boom, volume. Suddenly, this has height and depth and can hold a hand and fingers. So, so time to fold this around and start poking holes through it. So now that the fingers are all stitched together in a manner that is pleasing to me, the next step is to get the thumb. So the way that we're going to put the thumb into the glove is we get the thumb the right way around. And I can see that that is going to fit pretty magnificently. And it's going to be attached in this manner. We're going to stitch right side to right side. And what I'm going to do is align this junction of the seam. We're going to hold all of this in place and we'll probably end up trimming a little bit off of the end of the thumb, but that's fine because we're gonna have stitching going the whole way around here, holding everything in place.
And now obviously and inarguably the best part of making anything that is put together inside out, flipping it around the right way. I'm going to leave this seam open for the time being because this will be easy to complete. I do want to test that everything that I've done so far fits before I do the seam up the back of the hand. So, oh yes so that thumb seam that junction there that's looking nice that's a good start now obviously the fingers are going to be a complete and utter pain to flip around the right way i just want to come on come on come on uh the glue has started to peel there which is very ugly and i'm very mad about now if anyone knows a good way of doing this please do let me know Currently, I'm just kind of folding the fingers up and shoving them. So, I'm going to use the stylus a little bit. To try and coax it into turning the right way around a little bit better, I'm just getting the scoop end of my stylus in here to try and expand that out a little bit. So, I mean, you can see, like, it is making progress, but God, it's slow going. Is there a better way? I don't think so, honestly. Basically, just use whatever tricks and witchcraft you have at your disposal because the glove is going to resist every step of the way. Which is very frustrating because it's, it, I, just, I just want you to be whole. I just want you to be beautiful. Son of a... Oh, come on, you fu... God damn, fuck. Get in there. <sighs> around the right way test fit I give that one a th thumbs up that's lovely okay so clearly I didn't glue that properly because that's popped up. I'll just re-dye that. All of the fingers, the junctions in between are looking lovely. As you can see, it moves. I can grip. So now, uh, now that I have the fingers the right way around and I can see that the glove fits properly, what I'm going to do is just flip sort of the palm portion back inside out. Now all I need to do is get that seam punched and stitched. So. Let's get punching and stitching, shall we? Now that we've made the glove, it's time to make the gauntlet part that extends past here, which I will demonstrate on screen around about there. So, I need to figure out how big the gauntlet needs to be 
for these gloves. Now, I'm able to do that by referring to some of the reference images that I took from the game, and also because I finished this part first, the bracer. Now, this is what I like to use for prototyping leather. This is flooring foam. This is what would go underneath a floating floor, and I bought it from Bunnings for about $20 for this roll that I'll probably never ever get through in my entire life. And what I've got here is what I think the size of the gauntlet part ought to be. And now that I've got it all taped up, you can hopefully see where that's going to sit relative to the rest of the gauntlet. I think that that might be a little bit long. This might take a centimetre off the top of this. Is that too small at the bottom? Do I need to make it a little bit wider? These are the questions that we must ask. And now I'm going to go back to the drawing board and hopefully the next time that you see me, I'll be cutting a pattern out of some leather and some linen and we'll be carrying on from there. Hey there, do you guys have a minute to talk about our Lord and Saviour, wet forming? TLDR, all you need to know is this. If you completely saturate leather and then let it dry out, it will tend to hold the shape that was impressed upon it while it was wet. So to get the cross hatching design for our quilting pattern, First, we're going to completely saturate all of these pieces. You can do this by dunking the leather in water or you can do it just by liberally applying it with a rag like I'm doing here. And the great thing about wet forming is because we're aiming for complete saturation, you can't put too much water on it. It's, it's impossible to oversaturate it. Well, I mean, I suppose anything is possible. Don't use what I say is an excuse to leave your leather soaking in a tub overnight because that'll probably ruin it. After finishing off the leather panels, I got the linen lining ready. I was using the lining to help strengthen the leather, so I made sure to line all of the panels up on the straight grain before I attached them with contact adhesive. Now, I could use fabric scissors for this probably, but I don't want to gum up my fabric scissors with contact cement, so here we are. So we are now done all of these gauntlet pieces and I don't mean to blow my own horn too much, but god damn, god damn, god damn, that looks good, I'm so incredibly thrilled with these. And the other thing that I wanted to gush about really quickly was how much structure you actually get just by combining two layers together. In my case, leather and fabric, but even, you know, two layers of fabric, you can actually get an incredible amount of shape just by the geometry of the way that two flat things combine together. So when we originally glued the leather to the linen, they lay completely flat on the table and I stacked them as such. However, now you can see it a lot more clearly when they're laying on their front, but the way that it bows up, that's the curve that I want to have on it. And that's the curve that I put when I sewed it. When I sewed it on the stitching pony, I let it flop over and simply by letting it sit in that shape while I was running the thread through it, it wants to sit in that shape. And that is true for all four of them. All four of them are curving up at the edges. And that means that when I 
put these onto the cuffs of the glove, they're going to want to form that circular shape without too much persuasion from me and it means that they're going to sit in that shape at the part where they split up. So my plan here is to have a binding layer. So just like there's a binding layer that goes around the top and the sides, I'm going to put a binding layer of goat hide on the inside. Now, the geometry of how it's going to happen at this split, so we're going to have a sort of binding layer going around it like this, and then binding layers here and here. So how they're going to meet up in the middle there is it's, it's going to be a little bit of a suck it and see for me. Um, I'm basically just going to put too much binding on this. I'll leave an extra 15 mil or something on this end. Then I'll just figure out how it all overlaps and intersects. So this is going to be a bit of a learning experience, but I think I can basically keep this flat and get these to sit over it and we'll have a neat little Y intersection. Hopefully all of that makes more sense as you watch it being put together now. Okay, so the last bit of glue is currently drying. I've done one of the internal seams. So you can see that red seam with the stitching down the back. The way that I've worked out for the geometry to go. So you can see that coming down from the outside, we've got this piece on the right, just slightly overlapping this piece on the left. And that's fairly close to what's actually shown in the game. And the way that I did it, I'll show you because it's dumb. The shape at the bottom is actually kind of weird because uh, this is it. This is what's on the left and what's on the right. And then once that is happily sitting there, this piece can slot right down. And it doesn't matter that this doesn't cover the whole width of it because it only needs to just cover that edge. Did I do this inside seam the wrong way? I think I may have. It is, it is thick. That is an absolute unit of a seam. So having a seam that thick is good in the sense that it gives it a lot of strength. However, having my seam be so ridiculously dummy thick means that it doesn't fold like at all. And so I don't know how I'm going to attach this to the glove part. I don't know. I think that this might be the way to get it closest to what's depicted in the game. Currently, this is where we stand and what we're up to. And I think that I'm going to just run with this, see how this one pans out. I'll uh, run the stitches up the side see if we can't connect everything and then, you know, take stock and take it from there. I finished up the decorative parts of the gloves, the stitching down the backs of the hands and the silver spikes. The spikes are mounted like a Chicago screw, so I just had to punch a few holes through the knuckles. In hindsight, I should have done this when it was a flat pattern, but it was easy enough to maneuver my tools around the insides of the gloves. I mainly just wanted to get this done before I attached them to the cuffs, which would make this step a lot trickier. All right, so I'm feeling pretty chuffed right now. And that is because, so the gauntlet is now feature complete. So now comes the part where I attach this to that. Oh, and I'm just gonna say now before anyone comments, it's misaligned in the game. This is on purpose. So the plan is, plan step one, turn the gauntlet inside out. Plan step two, so the glove 
is inside the inside out gauntlet part and what I'm going to do is stitch a line just around the perimeter here. After I stitch a line all the way around this then gets flipped the right way round and then I will run a second line of thread. So we've essentially got two seams uh, holding onto these because that, that is that, that is going to be the most structural seam, the one that has the most stress put on it because when you put the gauntlet on you're going to grab onto the cuff of the gauntlet and, and pull it up your arm. So all of the stress from the glove going onto your hand is going to be transferred from from the top here, through here, and through this seam that's gonna run the whole way around the glove. So that's the plan and that's what I'm aiming to do. In hindsight, I do wish that I had done more of a lapped seam on the inside of the gauntlet because this, this shit is bulky. It is quite bulky on the inside. I have trimmed it down a fair bit towards the wrist. I think we'll still be able to get a fold in it, but we'll see. Um, not really sure what the plan is if this doesn't work. So fingers appropriately crossed. I'm feeling pretty good about what I've got so far. So let's try and push the envelope a little bit further, shall we? Feeling pretty nervous about this! It's time to flip it. This is the first time that I'll be flipping it right way around. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. It's so good. Seam misalignment. Yikes. I fucking did it. I fucking did it. With this pull of thread, and this snip of my tiny shears, my gauntlet is done. My gauntlet is actually complete. How's that for form work? Stands up under its own power. I cannot tell you how utterly thrilled I am with how these gloves came out. Making these has easily been one of the hardest things that I've put myself to and I'm utterly thrilled with the result. These are one of the last remaining major components for the Manticore cosplay. So from here, it's mostly belt hangings and then weathering. So getting frighteningly close to the business end now, and I'm very excited to show you all the reveal. If you're new here and you enjoyed watching this, I hope that you'll stick around with me for those remaining adventures and the reveal. But otherwise, you guys take it easy and I will catch you next time. Gee, Grant, uh, why didn't you glue that edge or like clamp it properly before you started? I don't know, because I'm not a coward and it worked perfectly. Anyway, all right, let's stitch this shit together.